Hello, happy Friday. Yes, I do in fact need this much caffeine to make it through today. Yeah. Wait, where's the pull? <laughs> Blind girl moment. Welcome. Welcome to my video. I would also like to state that before this, I was confidently waltzing through my apartment living room and walked literally face first into a massive filming light. The light wasn't on, so I couldn't see it. But yeah, just full speed face first into a giant umbrella filming light. Mom, if you ever questioned my blindness, I'm sure you don't now. Actually, I'm sure there's something that happens at least two to three times a day where you're like, yep, my daughter's blind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just going out. <laughs> Literally. On a day, uh, on an outing. <laughs> just going out, yeah. Just, just leaving. We home. barely leave the house and somehow, in fact, I wish today was Friday. Today for you is Friday, today for me is Tuesday. And I was eating dinner last night and I was like, literally, how is it only Monday? Because I just went on a small outing yesterday and got denied access twice with my guide dog. One of which was so aggressive, led to me just like in tears and calling the government and then having the government give the um, supervisor a tongue lashing and then they let me in. And then on my way home from finally being let in after an hour on the phone with the government and in <laughs> tears, uh, I got denied access in a lift, so. Then we just get on to lift, it, report it was, that in. <laughs> just a day in my life. <laughs> it's really fun. Even Lavender is getting upset over there. She's like, it's not fair. It's not right. Why Boss Cat Gallop doesn't get let in? He's so well behaved. He's such a nice dog. Um, you see from the title, today I'm going over eight things that I've never done because I'm blind. Now, I'm sure plenty of blind people have done these things. This is just me, Molly Burke, my life experience with blindness. So I'm just going over things that I personally have never done or experienced because of my vision loss. Um, also, I know there's more than this. So if you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up to let me know and I can maybe do a follow up. It's really annoying because I remember brushing my teeth last night and thinking of something and being like, I need to add that one to the list. That's a good one. And then I didn't and I woke up this morning and I remembered that I had something to add to the list that didn't, that I didn't and like I can't remember what it was. So that's frustrating because I know it was a good one, but that's fine. Also, if you're just stumbling upon this video, hi, welcome. I'm Molly, please hit subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Join the Killer Bee family. We have a lot of fun over here. Um, and I've been legally blind from birth and lost the majority of my sight at 14. But again, legally blind from birth. Important to keep that in mind while I go through this list. So, in no particular order, number one might shock and appall many of you. I never read Harry Potter. That's right. I'm a fake fan. I never read Harry Potter. I have watched the movies, but I never read the books. And here's the thing. Maybe some of you who are also disabled or who also like can't do something for a certain personal reason, like feel me on this one. When I was growing up and the Harry Potter books were coming out, my brother read them and was like obsessed with them. And I'm a young, younger sister and just like most younger siblings, I thought my older brother was so cool. And I mean, he genuinely was, like he was very popular. I was very bullied. So of course I just wanted to be like my cool older brother and do all the things that he did. And oftentimes I couldn't. What we have available as blind people today is very different from what we had available when I was younger growing up. My boyfriend and I talk about it all the time, he's also blind, we're always thinking about like the things, like how happy we are for blind people nowadays who are growing up because they do just genuinely have access to a lot more opportunity than we had when we were children. And it's really exciting. Um, but I, growing up, wanted to read Harry Potter, but at the time, I didn't have any access to audiobook versions, so I couldn't read it. I've never been able to read normal print books, so it wasn't available for me to read. And by the time audiobooks of Harry Potter became available, in my mind, I was just like, oh, not reading Harry Potter is a choice for me. I just chose not to read it. And so I've like maintained that my whole life. Like it's like this thing in me where it's like, it's easier to tell myself it's a choice not to do something than to tell myself that it's because I can't. You know what I mean? And that's why I'm saying like, maybe some of you can relate to me on that 
when you can't do something, you're like, oh, well, I wouldn't have wanted to even if I could, so it's fine. And it's just like a way of coping. So yeah, even though now and for many, many, many years, audiobooks of Harry Potter have been available for me to read if I so chose to, it's like I've just put it into my mind that like, oh, I just, it was a choice. And it's kind of this thing at this point in my life where I'm like, oh, well, if I read them now, like I'm so late to the game, it's stupid. Like, you know, like I just feel embarrassed to even go back now at 27 and read books that eight year olds were reading because I missed out on something, you know? So I don't know, maybe one day I will read them. Comment below, let me know your thoughts on this. Should I do it? Also, speaking of my older brother being like so cool and wanting to be just like him, reminded me of another thing so i'm just going to include it as number two so now this video is bumped to nine things i never went snowboarding and that's what my brother did growing up he was a snowboarder and when i had to transition out of playing soccer because i could no longer see enough to be safe on the field um, my parents wanted to find a new sport for me and yes soccer is a summer sport but i was joining a competitive league so you train all year round meaning we also trained in the winter indoors and that was at the point when I had to quit. So it was indoor sports in the winter that I was leaving soccer. So they wanted me to find a new winter sport to take over my soccer. And they found downhill skiing for the blind. And at the time, we in our community, like in our area, there was no accessible ski uh, snowboarding for the blind. There is now, and there may have been at that time in other cities, but there wasn't where we lived. And so I couldn't snowboard. And by the time, I think it was four years ago, I had the opportunity to try snowboarding for the first time, but I only had the opportunity that winter to ski for two days. And so I wasn't gonna give up one of my two days to like learn how to snowboard because I deeply love skiing. You can check out this video of me skiing. Um, so I've just never done it. And now that it is available, it is really something that I want to try one day. But again, because I get to ski so, like, I don't get to ski very often. It's very hard for me to give up a moment like skiing a black diamond to go snowboard a bunny hill. But one day I have to do it because like the little eight year old girl in me who looked up to my older brother so much and just wanted to be cool and snowboard like him wants to have that moment of being able to finally snowboard. And again, this is one of those things like I'm so happy that for young blind kids now, hopefully snowboarding has become more available for, for blind snowboarders than it was when I was young. Number three, I never learned how to write and read in cursive. So I remember vividly in grade five, that's when they started teaching cursive writing to students in my class. And it was like, it was a, it was a hot note. We were just, my whole support team and me were like, nope, that's, that's definitely not gonna happen. Because as you guys can probably see, my eyes are constantly shaking. Um, it's called nystagmus. I've done this video over here on it if you'd like to learn more. And because of that, on the page, things would kind of shake. And so when I would read, I would kind of put my finger under the line and I would follow along and I would have like a dome magnifier and follow along with my finger. But with cursive, it's so squiggly because I would only read Arial Bold, size 48. Yes, 48 Arial Bold. And so there was no way of making like cursive writing bold like that. And it was too squiggly for my eyes to be able to track. So I was just exempt. I did not have to learn to read and write in cursive. So that's something that because of my blindness, I've never done. Number four. Also school related, um, I grew up in Canada where French is something that you have to learn. It's a mandatory second language credit. Uh, up until a certain point, then it becomes a choice if you want to continue on. But for a couple of grades, it is mandatory. You okay there, Neve? I'm okay. Have a blind girl moment? Uh-huh. But it didn't <laughs> spill. It's a miracle. The lavender's keeping me company here. I don't know if you guys just saw that moment of me searching. <laughs> Play it back slow motion. It's a miracle. Yeah, I was exempt from French um, because they needed a, a, a time period in school where I could leave the classroom to learn Braille, which I've done this video about. And it made sense to them to exempt me from French 
to learn Braille, and that could be the substitute as my second language. Even though Braille isn't technically considered a language, blah, 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 whatever. So yeah, I never learned French, even though where I grew up in Canada, that's like a standard. People learn French in school. I did not, and it's directly related to being blind. Number five, I have never seen a star. That's something that was just never going to be possible for me. I have seen the moon, um, not like the way a sighted person would see the moon. Like I've been able to see just like kind of like a glowing light in the sky. I wasn't able to be like, oh, it's a crescent moon. It's a full moon. I was just able to see like if it was big enough that night, I would be able to see like a glowing light in the sky and usually only in more rural areas where there's not a ton of street lights because my eyes will fixate on the brightest, closest light. Not even necessarily the closest, but the brightest, which usually a street light would be brighter than the moon. But I have seen a moon, but never seen stars. Because of my disease, retinitis pigmentosa, I've been night blind from birth. And so yeah, I have just never seen a star. Number six, sticking with the theme of things I've never seen, uh, I've never seen freckles, which is funny because the Irish girl I am, I have freckles. And growing up, looking in the mirror, like I just, that just didn't exist on my face. I just couldn't see it. I know that like, like people have described them to me and honestly, like they don't sound cute. It's funny, like a lot of people who don't have them are like, they're so cute. And then I feel like a lot of people with them are like, I don't want my freckles. But I don't really, you know, I don't, I don't care about them really. Cause I don't, I don't know what they look like. But they don't sound cute, I'll say that. Like the way, think of how you describe it to a blind person. Like the way people generally describe it to me is like, oh, you have like little brown dots on your face. And I'm like, that doesn't sound cute. <laughs> but yeah, I've just never been able to see freckles. And actually I've also never been able to see eye color. Again, growing up, like if I would look in the mirror or look at somebody else, it was just a very vague general sense of a face. So I could like kind of see where the mouth was, kind of see where the nose is, kind of see where two dots of an eyes were of an eyes, wow, vocabulary today on point. So yeah, I've never been able to see freckles or eye colors. Uh, it's very sad, isn't very it? Sad. Hey you guys, I'm almost at 30,000 followers. I'm at 29.9 thousand. So I'm really close and I would really like to get this. That would be very nice if you could all go follow me at Lavender Burke. I don't post that often, but I think I'm pretty cute. Next on the list, I don't even know where we are. I think we're at number eight. I have never watched sports games because like I just couldn't see anything on the field, which I grew up, what? <laughs> You're just so cute, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I am super, super girly as you guys know, but I kind of think, I always grew up very much straddling tomboy and girly girl. Like I have elements of both very strongly in my personality and I do still to this day, which I feel like you guys more so see my very girly girl side, but I do have a very big tomboy side as well, which I would say people in my real life see. But I grew up very athletic, very into sports. I played, let's list them. I played basketball, competitive soccer, um, tennis, volleyball, dance, I did gymnastics, figure skating, uh, I did uh, swimming, um, horseback, riding. horseback riding, skiing. And let's be fair, some of them you were excellent at and some of course were yes. challenging, like basketball or tennis. Hey, or like... don't you, <laughs> basketball leave, I won I know. the contest at school. Well. I'm not saying you did, didn't do well, but just give people the yes. right impression. Tennis, was, <laughs> tennis and volleyball tennis and like a... were definitely the like... Molly's determination. <laughs> Sheer determination. <laughs> All the kids at tennis would get so frustrated because I would stand right at the net and the coach would throw the ball directly for my racket and then go swing. <laughs> so it's like, was I really playing tennis? But all the other kids like try to explain to kids like she's blind, but I'm like walking around without a cane and my eyes totally look normal, which is not what like society thinks of blindness. Anyways, especially children. But yeah, I did play all these sports. I was very good at some, like soccer was what I was probably best at, and then not very good at others. But I was very into sports, that's what I'm trying to get at. But I would never watch sports on TV or like enjoy going to a sports game because I just couldn't see anything. And like the announcer just kind of like rambling things off just didn't give me enough context to really understand what was happening. So yeah, I never, never watched a sports game. Next on the list, because I've completely lost count as to where we are, video games. Again, my cool older brother Brady would play video games and all I wanted to do was play video games like him. And I remember finding like one 
video game, and I believe it was called, please tell me some of you remember this, Fusion Frenzy. <laughs> and it was high color contrast, and it was very slow paced. I would stick my face right up to the TV, and I would like push button, push button, push button, push button. And that was like me feeling like I could play a video game, but it certainly wasn't playing like any of the cool video games, which I really wanted to play. Like I really wanted to be able to play like Call of Duty, World of Warcraft. Like I wanted to play all of those. Oh my God, what was the other one? The carjacking? What was that video game? Grand Theft Auto. I really wanted to be able to play all of these games. Again, this is like my tomboy side coming out, but um, I just couldn't, I couldn't see them. And I don't know if there's like accessible, I know like I have blind friends who game. I don't know if they do those games or if there's like specific games that they use. If you guys want to see like a blind girl gaming video where I try to live out my childhood fantasy and play accessible video games, let me know. But, but accessible video games like just weren't widely available or something that was really in existence back when I was growing up so it just wasn't possible but now I know there is a lot more accessible video games so it is something I'd be like really down to do videos of I don't know if my audience would be interested in seeing me gaming but like gaming is something that I always grew up really wanting to, to do and not being able to so and we're gonna end off with the most obvious I never got my driver's license, but that does not stop me from singing. I got my driver's license last week, just like we always talked about. Ugh, great song. I'm still not over it. I get that it's months old. I'm still not over it. It's fine. Yeah, I never, I never did that whole thing. I never sat for my driver's test or like went to driver's ed or, you know, got in the car with my parents and did my driver's class. Doesn't mean I didn't drive a car, which was very illegal, but I've done it multiple times now. Um, but most blind people have. I feel like pretty much all of my blind friends have either had a parent, family member, or friends like take them to an empty parking lot and let them drive a car. I feel like it's like a rite of passage as blind people to like have that moment. And if you're a blind person and nobody's let you have that moment, find that person to let you have that moment. You deserve it. And it's terrifying and very fun. Uh, I've done it a number of times, but yeah, I've never actually like been able to get my license, of course, which is funny. You would really be baffled at how many people Google how do blind people drive and how many people um, ask me and other blind people how we drive. Really shocking. We don't is the answer. It would be very unsafe. But yeah, so I've never done that, that whole thing that most 16 year olds or whatever age it is where you live have that experience. Never done it. That said, I do know all, pretty much all the like traffic rules and like how traffic works. But I knew it like well before my friends did because that's a basic part of orientation and mobility training growing up is learning like the ways of the road and how traffic works and all the different um, intersections and things like that. And so I remember growing up feeling like I knew so much more about how traffic works than all of my friends. And even when they started getting their license, they'd like tell me things and I'd be like, mm, yeah, no, I know. I learned that when I was eight. Anyways, that's all I'm gonna share in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I just thought it'd be fun to kind of like reminisce on all the things I missed out on. Honestly, like I'm, most of these I'm not sad about. Things that I would still love to do is like snowboard and play video games. Those are probably the two I'd love to do the most. Maybe I'll read Harry Potter one day. The rest of it I'm like, eh, no sweat off my back. Uh, if you are also disabled or have for some reason had to miss out on certain things in life growing up, comment down below and let me know what those things are for you in your life. Again, this was just me and my experience of blindness. This is not true for everybody. Everybody has unique, diverse experiences. That's why it's important to not just follow one blind person, but to, you know, if my channel piques your interest in learning about blindness, then follow other blind people and other blind creators as well. All right, that's all I have to say for you here today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you would like another blind girl list video, you can click up here and check out this one. And if you want to see you, my followers control my life for 24 hours, you can click right here. See you next time.